Cruisers are being warned. A cruise line is being sued, and we have a couple cruise ships. Cruise ships delayed, plus a lot more. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lira Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face, for your face on Monday, Monday, the 4th of March, 2024, a special day in my life, my partner in crime, the lovely Jenny B. Well, today is her birthday. Happy birthday, baby. I love you, and I will be home soon, but not before we process through this cruise news. And cruise news story number one is one that we should pay attention to. I got an email from a viewer who had recently cruised on the Celebrity Ascent, and they sent me a copy of an email that they received from Celebrity Cruise Line alerting them, warning them about the potential of Legionella. The email says that back in January, the CDC was notified that two passengers had tested positive for the respiratory disease Legionella and that uh, you know the onus was on Celebrity Cruise Line to notify passengers on the ascent going forward that th this had occurred. Now, Legionella is not one of those diseases that passes from person to person. It's not contagious that way, but it comes from a bacteria bacteria that is found in water. So sometimes it shows up in air conditioning units and hot tubs and sinks, just standing water. And so celebrity, in addition to alerting their passengers, certainly going through all the steps on the ascent to see if they can identify any points of Legionella on that cruise ship. In the email that Celebrity sent out, they do say that most healthy people exposed to Legionella do not get sick, but there can be an increased risk for those 50 years or older, smokers or those with chronic lung disease or a weakened immune system. Symptoms include cough, shortness of breath, fever, muscle aches, and headaches. And they're saying that if you've experienced these symptoms within 14 days of your cruise, that you wanna seek medical attention and to show the letter that's been emailed out by Celebrity to your doctor just so they know. So I share it. Uh, I know not everybody's recently been on the Celebrity Ascent, but maybe some have. Make sure you check your email and uh, really just to raise awareness that sometimes this happens on cruise ships. Cruise news story number two has got a little bit of that deja vu feeling. Feels like a story that we've heard before. There's a company out there that's proposing a three-year world cruise. And uh, when they proposed it, they had not yet procured a cruise ship. And we heard this story before with Life at Sea and it turned out horrible. They never got a cruise ship. I don't know if people, people still may be stranded in Istanbul trying to get back home, but uh, this is a new endeavor. And well, the news that I'm bringing to you today is that that new three-year endeavor is that three fingers? That, that's six altogether, I guess. The new three-year endeavor by the company named Villa V. Well, they got themselves a cruise ship. They purchased this ship right here. It's the former Braemar cruise ship from Fred Olson. And uh, well, this is certainly a big hurdle to clear the way. This is one of those deals where you actually buy a residence on the cruise ship. It's gonna start with a three-year cruise where you can jump on different segments. The way it works is you actually purchase a cabin, almost like a condo. Ownership pricing starts at uh, $99,999 for an inside cabin. And the ownership is the, a guaranteed ownership for 15 years, uh, but there's also pay as you go. So it's kind of like a mixed bag. It's like going to Westgate. You got people that don't own the timeshare that can go there, pay a weekly fee. And then you got people that own the timeshare, I guess. Uh, anybody ever get into these timeshare things? I just remember there was a time in my life where I didn't have a lot of money and I went to Orlando and somebody told me that, look, you could go to these timeshare things and you could get free park tickets. And I did that one time and, and I came away from that experience with park tickets uh, almost in a fisticuff and convinced that if uh, Dante would have kept writing that the timeshare presentation uh, exiting would be the, the 10th level of hell. That's, that's what I think. But look, uh, you, you got to do what you got to do to get into the theme park. If you own a timeshare, God bless you, but I don't know how you got through that. They, they break you down. Did they break you down? I saw a video the other day that said, as uh, my generation, Gen X and the boomers and everybody, as we start to phase out, so will timeshare ownership. I don't know. Is there any 20-year-olds out there that own a timeshare? And uh, certainly, I like this idea of owning a permanent residency on a cruise ship. I kind of like to play the field a little bit. I don't think I'd like to be locked into a single cruise ship, but I, I know for some... That might be a good financial investment, uh, maybe even cheaper than you know retiring at a retirement facility or something like that. So uh, yeah, good news for this next three-year cruise being put on by Villa V. At least they have a cruise ship. 
How about that? Cruise news story number three, let's talk about a world cruise right now, the MSC Poesia. The Poesia impacted like many other cruise ships we talked about over the last few weeks. Originally, they were supposed to go through the Red Sea. They were supposed to transit the Suez Canal. This was part of the itinerary. And like so many other itineraries, we've seen this change because of the volatility in the Red Sea. And like we've seen on many other cruise ships, a lot of the passengers, or enough of the passengers, a vocal amount of the passengers are unhappy about the change. And so now MSC, the captain on board the Poesia, they've listed out all of the hoops they had to jump through to even make sure that this world cruise wasn't canceled, trying to explain to people, disgruntled people, this is why we had to change and go down the coast of Africa just to keep you safe from missile strikes to your face. That seems like that would be enough of an explanation. But also in a gesture of goodwill, they're giving everybody back like 10% of their cruise fare, I think up to 500 euros. And so they're trying to throw a little compensation they're trying to give a big explanation. And again, look, I understand, you know, and I would probably feel a way if I'd paid a lot of money for a world cruise that I had a high level of anticipation for the stops on that world cruise and it got changed, you know, and, you know, and of course they communicated all these changes prior to the cruise. And I think they gave people options there. But um, it continues to be like a PR nightmare for these companies, the fact that they have to change because of the challenges in the in the Red Sea. I'm not trying to be a fanboy for the cruise companies, but I do, I am a fanboy for personal responsibility. And so I'll keep beating that drum that anytime you book a cruise, there is a chance that that cruise could change. Your itinerary is not set in stone. And sometimes things happen, weather, mechanical difficulties, you know, missile attacks that could change, you know, the ability to go on the uh, predetermined or the first set out itinerary. N not that you shouldn't be upset, not that you shouldn't have a voice about it, but again, at the same time, you know, the missile attacks, you obviously don't want to sail through the Red Sea. So, uh, but squeaky wheel, getting some grease, getting some compensation and getting an explanation. Uh, good on MSC for trying to do something. I guess they could have just said tough you know, you signed the contract. So it's nice that they're doing something. Cruise news story number four. Sometimes we talk about the proliferation of the mega ship in the worldwide cruising fleet that we're seeing more and more mega ships built and less and less medium and small size cruise ships built. And uh, well, that continues to be true. And so what we see when it comes to medium and small cruise ships is we see a lot of announcements about dry docks and we've got that going on right now. We've got the Navigator of the Seas leaving the West Coast of California, Royal Caribbean ship Navigator of the Seas going to Asia for a routine dry dock. This 3,100 passenger vessel was built in 2002. Like I said, a routine dry dock. They're gonna work on some technical things and then they're gonna work on improving some of the public areas. It's really wild when you think about the lifespan of a cruise ship, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You know, if they can keep putting, you know, improvements and, and keep, you know, fixing the thing up, they're gonna keep this thing in service for a long period of time. And right now it does seem like when it comes to small and medium ships, that's what cruise companies are uh, you know, endeavoring to do, just keep them running for long periods of time, keep them in service. It'll be interesting though, to see as these phase out, if they'll be replaced with bigger ships, or if we're going to get something like a 3,100 size passenger cruise ship from Royal. I know they've talked in some of their earnings uh, about thinking about medium to small ships, but uh, so far we haven't heard any plans of anything smaller than like an Oasis class cruise ship. I've probably asked the question before, what do you like? Small, medium, large, mega, mega rega? What's your favorite size cruise ship? Uh, leave a comment. Blue. Cruise news story number five. We have two Carnival cruise ships being delayed over the weekend and into today, Monday, being delayed because of John Carpenter's The Fog. Look, I don't like horror movies. I've never seen the movie The Fog, but it just show, goes to show you that that's stuck in my head. John Carpenter's the Fog, Stephen King's Cujo, Steven Spielberg's Jaws. I have an unreasonable, unrational fear of sharks, St. Bernard's, and poor visibility because of theater, because of movies, and it's all unfounded. But sometimes the fog can be tricky, and that's what two cruise ships experienced over this weekend. First, we had the Carnival Spirit delayed going back into Mobile, Alabama, and now we have the Carnival Elation delayed getting back to the port of Jacksonville. It was due back today. Carnival is reaching out telling guests that are supposed to embark on the elation. Don't come to the cruise port yet. Keep checking in. We'll let you know. I, I did take a quick peek at 10.30 a.m. this morning. Port of Jacksonville still closed. 
Carnival is still telling passengers not to come to the port. They're unsure as to when the elation will get back in and disembark their passengers and get ready for new passengers. Hopefully that still happens today, or you're looking at a scenario where you're going to have the next cruise maybe shortened because because of the fog, because of the fog. What's I, another, I, I got horror stories on my mind. Two other movies that scared me greatly when I was a kid. Of course, uh, Cujo scared me, uh, Children of the Corn and Pet Cemetery. All of those movies scare. And I just remember at one point when my, uh, you know, when some of my kids were teenagers, I said, all right, you guys think, you know, cause they were like into paranormal. They were into these scary movies. I'm like, you guys want to see scary movies? So we sat down, we watched Children of the Corn and Pet Cemetery, and they laughed at me like, this isn't scary. I don't know. What's the scariest movie you've ever seen? And uh, do you like to be scared? And uh, hopefully everybody's okay on the carnival. Elation. And are, are you waiting to get on the elation? A bunch of stuff to talk about there. Leave a comment below. Now we got to talk about this lawsuit that's just been levied against Royal Caribbean International over a passenger that passed away on a cruise excursion. Definitely some takeaways for all of us from this story. I'm going to get into the details on that, but first, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That's somewhat scary. That's a horror movie in itself. Ca Ever since the surgery, even cruising comes out different. Cruising. It's so wild not to have like a huge thing pressing on my, it, do you want to stay up to date? I'm, I'm sorry guys, it's Monday and it's Jenny B's birthday. I'm excited to uh, go hang. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on in cruising, please consider subscribing, notification bell on, that way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Okay, so almost a year ago today on March the 15th, there was a family on Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas. This family had wanted to do a zipline adventure and beach escape excursion Roatan that was offered through the cruise line, but that excursion was sold out. And so in the face of that excursion being sold out, they found a nearly identical excursion offered through a third party shore excursioner. The family left the cruise ship. They connected with the third party shore excursion company. They went and did the zip lining portion of the tour. And then they were taken to West Bay Beach where they were given the opportunity to jump off a wooden platform into water. The wife in the family, she jumped off the platform into the water. The husband followed her in. The husband dove in head first, and when he went into the water, he struck his head on something in the water and was rendered unconscious in the water. The gentleman's name, Edmund Rucker, he was pulled out of the water by another man, Jeremy Lewis, who performed CPR to keep him alive while they waited for medical care to come. Jeremy Lewis, the person that was performing the CPR, said this after the event, this is a big beach with a lot of resorts. There was no medical help at all. It was at least 50 minutes before a medical person got there. There was no way to keep him alive that long. And so fast forward to today, the family is suing Royal Caribbean International because they're saying that Royal did not make them aware of a strike that was going on on the island, that uh, strike within the healthcare professionals. And they're saying that it created a situation where if something happened to someone off of the cruise ship, that the you know reasonable expectation of getting quick medical attention was not there. The complaint asserts that the defendants knew or in the exercise of due care should have known that if passengers were injured beyond the point of debarkation in Roatan, Honduras, while participating in any excursion or sightseeing, including the shore excursion and RC zip and beach excursions, that they would be at great risk and unlikely to receive timely medical care because of the local labor unrest. The complaint also goes on to outline that there was a delay of the return of the deceased to the family because of this labor dispute that was going on in Roatan, and that in addition to not warning passengers about the potential of not getting timely medical attention in the event of an injury, that there could be some, you know, emotional distress, trauma, emotional trauma because of the delay of being able to receive the deceased. And that this is also, uh, you know, uh, under what should have been the responsibility of Royal Caribbean. Just a summation of the complaint, the wife is seeking damages from the defendants, which is Royal Caribbean, also Shore Excursioner, a couple others, 
uh, seeking damages for negligence, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and their misrepresentations in connection with the operation and conduct of the excursions. So at the end of the day, this family is saying that even though they took a third-party excursion that's not offered by Royal Caribbean, that because Royal Caribbean is bringing you to a place, that they should be warning you about what's going on at the place. So like in this case, if there's a you know labor dispute that's impacting medical care in Roatan, that Royal Caribbean has an obligation to warn you about that. This is gonna be an interesting case to see how this plays out. How far does the cruise line's responsibility extend for you once you leave the cruise ship? If you're not on one of their excursions and you're just doing something at a place that they brought you to, how far does their responsibility extend? I think this will be a case that will highlight uh, what that responsibility is. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Boom, that's your cruise news. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button. Tony for La Lido Loca. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise.